Hello, everybody. Hi, Bonnet Heads. Hi, Allison. Hi, Dean. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, good seeing you as always. Good to see you too. Always good to see you uh, too. How are things? I'm going to start with a uh, a deep question. We're oh, just okay. Go straight to okay. Okay. Let, let's cut the chit chat. Okay. And let's just get to the depth of the, the conversation right now. Wow. Here we go. I'm scary. Okay. I know. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. How do you think you're going to be remembered? <laughs> Oh my! Boom! My God, there it is. Pamela. There it that's is. Like a, that's like a huge question. That's a huge. Like when huge we're gone. Question. Listen, yeah. listen. I'm wearing my glasses today. Today's a smart episode. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's there good we go. because we're, we've got the we've got the right guest for that. So, yeah. um, listen. I how are we going to be remembered? I mean, I think on a on a really fundamental level where certainly in terms of the people we're talking to today and what we're doing we're going to be remembered or i'm going to be remembered for not necessarily for the podcast although i hope people remember that but for the work that we that i did 45 years ago uh, on little house i think uh, i've said for years not to get morbid but y- you know when i do leave this earth the first line in my obituary will include little house on the prairie there's there's mm. no doubt in my mind about that and uh, I, I just think that that's that's important to me that it does because it, it's a it's a central part of my life that has connected me to people and places that I never would have seen without this. It's been a great great gift. How about you, Allison? Well, I've I always remember the story. It's apocryphal, maybe true. They buried Bella Lugosi in the Cape. Um, <laughs> I'm so relieved that currently no one knows the location of the wig. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at least I, I'll be spared that. Um, yeah, it's going to be weird. I mean, it, I look at all the things I've done in my life and everything and all my charity work and whatnot and everything. And so, but it, best remembered as for no question. Funny. And it'll say nasty Nelly Olson from the word nasty will appear. Absolutely. In my, that, that is it and i'll no i, I know about what's going to happen <laughs> and the, and they'll run the same clip i mean they'll be talking Which about one is it? it'll, yeah. it'll be down the hill in the wheelchair oh, it'll be oh, down the okay. it'll be oh, we're, yes. so, of course, we'll, we're so sad she's gone we miss her so much and here she is going down the hill in a wheelchair <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what's Arnie gonna happen <laughs> you know michael landon said i i i i Thinking about this, Michael Landon said, remember me with smiles and laughter, for that's the way I'll remember all of you. If you can only if you can only remember me with tears, then don't remember me at all. That's what he said. You know, how, how you know, Michael was a control guy. I mean, that is kind of saying this is how it's going to be even after I'm gone. Yeah. But then it's true. It's so true. I mean, we, we were we were at the, the funeral and the thing. And and it is true because when you remember him, oh, it's, wow. the, it's the high pitched giggle. And it's yeah. it's and yeah. it it's it's a hell of a thing. And people go, where is that from? Who? Re-? Well, well, he did. It's like, who did they quote at his funeral? Him. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, well, yeah. No, go on, Dean. No, no, you true. go ahead. Oh, look at that. Where, where did that come from? I know, I know. Look, look. They, it's, they're showing the, the plaque right here. Oh, oh, awesome. See? Thank you very much, that Tony. Is, that was our yeah. Tony. Tony Sweet, our engineer who, who, we who, just, who, who we found that Tony. quote and put it on the screen. Thank he's, you, Tony. Because he, he is a genius. It out he of does that. Ether. That's what he does. Yeah. That's why we love well, him. Well, uh, uh, today, uh, we are talking to a person who yes. really understands the Laura Ingalls Wilder legacy mm-hmm. at, from the studios of UBM Go in Burger Bank, California. In, I'm sorry, what did you say? In Burger Bank? Well, well, did you I say in Burger Bank? But, but my, I didn't. Oh, I, that's what I heard. That Maybe I'm hungry. <laughs> Go ahead and say that again. <laughs> the tinnitus. No, it is Burger Bank from now on. Are you kidding me? We're not even editing this out. Down of the, the podcast. That is, this is being short. In. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> From the studios of UBN Go in Burbank, California. Okay, got Visit it. Simi Valley presents a special event podcast. This is Little House 50 for 50. Ah, yes. Now I'm going to take out my fiddle and play the tunes for you all. During our um, early episodes, as you all know, uh, for our podcast here, we're exploring the early origins and influences 
of Little House. And have, um, we haven't gotten to Ed Friendly yet or Michael. Nope. <laughs> no, <laughs> but that, not, no, not as a not as a full on topic, but I think that's going to change today. We will have least, a, we oh, have a whole uh, thing yeah, yeah, about yeah. them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Not today. Not that today. will be a, 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 another. We're going day. further yeah, but, back. But the, We're but further back. Little House is the history or the the backstory of Little House's journey to television is a fascinating one. It is yeah. it is a drama unto itself and it's it's a very it, it's it's a great story. I can't wait to hear all about well, it. Yeah, well, I mean, we're going to be spooling that story breath, out over a lot of different episodes, here. but today's part yes. of it. That'll be, yeah. that'll be season two. That'll be, <laughs> season two. all about the origin story of getting this show on the air. Yeah. Um, but for today's guest has an understanding of that journey and an appreciation for history, too. So let me tell you about our guest today. Our guest's career as an educator and author was first impacted by an introduction to history and literature in elementary school yes at first an occasional reader he became fascinated in history and historical fiction by the third grade through exposure to the civil war era hello Mm. and his teacher's daily reading of the little house books yes amazing well the little house books were staples in classrooms all over America during For the time, years. so we know that this person is not a kid. This, this, this person you know, is not a child. Were, were that staples. Would be an interesting and, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Pamela. No, I'm he sorry. understands yeah. that the Wilder stories, the Wilder stories mm-hmm. in particular, were true. Yeah, but they were not all the truth. Laura said that herself. They're the truth, right. but not all the truth. But enough. True. Multiverse, enough. Yeah. Laura. Multiverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Multi- the, 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 in the Laura multi. <laughs> Right, the Laura multiverse. That was a true version for sure. Um, but he, he, uh, our guest started writing letters to the sites of the wilder, uh, wilder stories, looking for more information. Mm-hmm. And he, um, as like a kid, as a kid, he's like writing to the yeah. museums, like who's yeah. doing this? Yeah. Yeah, like fan mail, I suppose. He and then he later visited them all, and he was invited by the Laura Ingalls Wilder Home and Museum. Where's that? Which is super cool. Well, that's you've in, got the one in Walnut know? Grove, and then you have the one in Dismet. In Dismet. In Dismet. I mean, Dismet. That's that's the Where? one. I mean, that's the one I'm thinking. I like of, that one. The, yeah, yeah. Well, because that's where they spent the most time. But yeah. of course, we wanted the show based on the today in Walnut Grove. So you know. I just, I right. you know, just as a just as a quick aside, I feel like. Walnut Grove was a far more romantic name than Desmet. It, it, it just, you know, it, there's just something. <laughs> ab- it's just something about Walnut Grove that is sort of warm <laughs> and inviting. And Desmet sounds, you know, it. I love Desmet, and we've visited there many times. And if I you're like listening Desmet. in Desmet, you know we all love coming to Desmet. But there's something romantic in the and, sound of Walnut Grove. And in the books about yes. Desmet, you got it's winter and and things are hard. And yeah. whereas Walnut Grove is kind of like, oh, it's Miss Beetle and oh, the school. Sure, and, oh, sure. And go ahead, Pam. I'm sorry. Okay, we di- yeah, get involved so, in so these things. He was invited by the Laura Ingalls Wilder Home and Museum to write and publish his first research yes. findings. And since then, he has juggled. A teaching career, journalism, composition, American literature, and U.S. history. Hello, don't you do you understand why I'm wearing the smart glasses today? Along with researching, writing, and editing over twenty books. That's two zero twenty books. The early era of his publishing career included the gathering of valuable oral history from friends and relatives of the Ingalls Wilder families. Amazing, and Garth Williams, illustrator of the Little House books. I produced a documentary on Manzo Wilder Life Before Laura that made extensive use of the Garth Williams illustrations, and they are extraordinary and evocative, and they are such an important part of the whole Laura Ingalls Wilder literary experience. Mm -hmm. Very important part. Go ahead, Pam. I'm sorry. I look like the Nelly drawing. I look like the Nelly drawing. You do. You do. Okay. Uh, All right. Here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to spit this out and I'm not going to mess it up. Some of his Wilder related titles include, here we go. Laura Ingalls Wilder, a biography. Laura Ingalls Wilder, country. A little house sampler, the story of the Ingalls family and the selected letters of Laura Ingalls Wilder. That is a Laura Ingalls Wilder Lollapalooza right there. <laughs> Have, yeah, you I mean, Have you been? Have you been to okay, Lollapalooza? I, I, know who this, I know who this is. He received <laughs> the first Laura Ingalls Wilder Legacy Award from the Laura Ingalls Wilder yes. Legacy and Research Association in 2010 yeah. in Mankato, Minnesota, a very famous place 
where Little House series fans know yeah. at an event <laughs> called, as you say, Laura Palooza, which is which just, is it, awesome. Yeah. I have been to Laura Palooza. I think twice. You've been yeah, to Laura Palooza. I, yeah, yes. absolutely. It's really there. Really is an event called Laura Palooza. For those of you who didn't know, there really is a thing called Laura Palooza, and it's awesome. It's a lot of librarians, but they go just nuts. <laughs> they go nuts. Librarians, <laughs> librarians gone wild gone for the great. weekend. Yes, is basically yes, what exactly. happens. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, nobody. Uh, uh, so I, I I know who this is. Nobody is more loved in the little house on the prairie community for the depth of his knowledge about Laura and his generosity to share that knowledge with anybody who wants to know about it. Pam, bring bring this man on. We love him. Yes, we know I him will. and we love him. And Definitely. I'm so yes. I'm so excited to talk to him too. Let's welcome to Little House Fifty for Fifty, William Anderson. <laughs> Oh, welcome, Bill. There, look at you. There, there you is. are. Welcome, Hi, Bill. Bill. Welcome to Fifty for Fifty. We're so excited to have you here. You are such an important part of the Laura Ingalls Wilder experience. As much as the series and the books are a different world, but you for us who are a part of it, you are such a, an important connected piece of connective tissue in in all of Little House. I mean, it's just so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Pam. And thank you, Allison. I just feel honored to be here this evening Aww. talking to you about the kickoff or beginning of this memorable 50 Years mm. of Little House in the Prairie. It's uh, going to be a fantastical <laughs> year of celebrations. It is. <laughs> and I think you're, there are going to be so many thousands of people that are going to be thrilled and delighted to participate. And the cast members who are dynamite and the yeah. sweetest people working yes. with the fans. Yes. I've worked different places with individuals, Allison and Dean and the late Hersha, who we miss, and Charlotte Stewart, and on and on. We always have a ball when we're at a wilder gathering or a wilder site. And the people that attend those events are simply ecstatic to be there. And this will be a, a landmark year. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Bill. Yeah. We're, we're knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. They're they're uh, an amazing group of people. It's true. It's all true. Fans out there. They're <laughs> lovely. They're lovely off camera. Um, so, Dean, Dean and Allison, how how long have you known Bill? Anderson? Oh, good. Heavens. I'm only going to call you by a first and last Bill, name. Bill, Bill, Bill. When, when yeah. did me? Was it at that? strange book fair out on the prairie somewhere that library thing or was it in <laughs> that, was it in Missouri was, was it at Laura's house <laughs> was it was it at Laura's house in Mansfield or was well, that the first time we met I can take a little credit for getting you there Alex, yeah because there were in the early years of the TV show and long afterward there were two camps oh the yeah book people and yes. the TV people. Ba boom. And I always thought the twain shall meet. Thank and you. I have been on the board of the Laura Ingalls Wilder Home Association. It seems like since I was about 18 years old. But <laughs> not that far back, but at least. But nearly. A long time. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. we had an annual fall festival called Rocky Ridge Day. Rocky Ridge Day. And it was all very literary. We have artists there that had illustrated the Little House books. And I finally talked the board into inviting Allison and featuring Little House in the Prairie TV show at one of these autumn events. And I'd done There's Walnut so Grove. I did Walnut Grove in like... It was around 1994. Yeah, because I did Walnut okay. Grove in like 91 or 92. So yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Yeah. And then... So was this, this before it, like all the fan events were started? Like this was sort of like... They were just yeah, I, think this is, I think this is early on in that in early on in that yes. adventure. Oh, they'd never yeah. done it. And yeah. when I went to Walnut Grove, it was like a huge deal. They hadn't done... I was. It was just me and yeah. it was a whole fluke bizarre yeah. thing yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah Sorry, it was you it yeah. was you so, who said uh, bring her into the, the house 
a bigger visit for Allison, right synonymous with that Rocky Ridge Day, I was doing the Children's Literature Festival. That's where that uh, Another big confab for kids at Missouri, no, Drury College. That's the so one. So I said to the uh, organizers there, we're bringing in Allison Arngrim. Would you like to have her also be at the Kid Lit Festival? And I had been a, done an author visit at Laura Ingalls Wilder Elementary. This is in Springfield, Missouri. So I contacted them and I said, don't you think your kids would love to see Nasty Nelly <laughs> in person? <laughs> yes. So I think Allison did two or three other appearances. And then the finale was our Rocky Ridge Day at Laura and Almanzo's home. Yep. We were getting thousands of people, but the day you were there, <laughs> we broke records. Yeah. Wow. And you were so wow. dear with all the people in Sign T-shirts and casts and lunch boxes and books. And that pictures. was when we first hung you out. You got group. me in there. That's right. You're you're the instigator on this one. Yeah, and our board was very very happy that we had done this big giant leap. So a couple of years later, when we were doing the official opening or dedication of the 1928 Rock House yes. on Rocky Ridge Farm, mm. which Rose Wilder Lane built for her parents as a retirement home. I said, well, why don't we now invite Dee? Mm. And Manly needs to be here. And Dean came. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> I think you cut the ribbon, Dean. Oh, oh yeah, the, yes. the, I love the that at the Rock House. Yeah, I love that restored Wilder home. And Dean, I will tell you that you broke all records for our bookstore. Mm -hmm. Farmer Boy just went out like hot Aww. pancakes, and yeah. you signed them and were yeah. posing for pictures, and you were a trooper as well. So eventually, over the years. We would stagger a year where we'd have it more literary or uh, Renee Grafe, the illustrator of some Wilder books. But we eventually had Charlotte and Doc Baker. Yes, Kevin went. And Kevin oh. always oh. wanted to have. You, you had um, Matt Labrador, or rather Pat Labrador last year. Did you, right? did you have Dabs Greer, too, in the back of the some day? Point, the Reverend, uh, our Reverend I think Reverend. he was gone at that time, but he yeah. was right yeah. from that area. He lived right. in the oh. Yeah, that's right. He lived in oh, Missouri. 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 Well, just a so quick speech. I'm that? going to be there this fall. I just can tell you that I will be there yes. in, in September of uh, Excellent. 24. And. Well, I think I will be, too, because we have our board meeting. There you done. go. And this will be huge because the book will be out by that time. Right, Dean? It will be. Oh, yes. Thank you for thank plug, you. What a, plug, what a, what a plug, good plug, plug, Bill. Plug, so yes, thank you. Yes. yes. My book, Prairie so, Man, My Little House Life and Beyond, will be out on, on June 25th of this year. And right. so I will have hopefully boxes of them available oh, yeah. for people to potentially have if they want them uh, while I'm in yes. uh, in Mansfield. And it will fly yes. off the shelves like Farmer Boy did when you were first there. It will. Yes, and people yeah. can go people can go to the podcast website as well if they want to uh, directly get linked to the book. Yes. I'll, I'll, but your books. we're looking forward to Dean autographing his own memoir. Yeah. And you, you can still sign Farmer Boy, but this yeah. one oh, yeah. really special. You have your book there for the first time I will at Rocky Ridge. always sign That's Farmer lovely. Boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hope, I wish those two sweet teenage girls uh, <laughs> that we were at Heritage Hill. Heritage Hill, day. another gorgeous place. And there was a line of about 250 people. And it got to be 5 p.m. And Dean and I were just sitting at the table signing our books and Dean's pictures. Yeah. And these two sweet girls were in line. I kept watching them inch up. What do they have written on those T-shirts? And each one of them had a handmade T-shirt. And it said, <laughs> were, were these two of the Dean's divas or something? Or manly oh, I'm wild about manly. Oh, I'm wild. I'm wilder about manly. And then there were Dean's manly. divas. There were Dean's divas. Yes, we yes. love you. You what had a, a club. A you had a club. What a group. Yeah, no, and I know. <sighs> we, the cast, and I have been included in many of those. We've had some wonderful summer experiences going to 
restored villages that celebrate the Ingalls and Wilder eras. Uh, Genesee Village Museum, which is a great uh, location, fabulous place. Uh, yeah. Green Bay over and over mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. the individual book sites. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not a normal summer if you don't have a wilder <laughs> uh, event to attend. That's right. Or two or three. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So we've had great times. So, Bill, I'm just curious. What, when and why? Well, let's start with why. Why did why? you connect with uh, with the Laura Ingalls Wilder books? Or when did you? Let's start with that. When okay. did you connect with them? Yeah, I want to know this, too. All oh, right. Little boy. We were all squiggly third graders <laughs> at one point, including me. And I, I can't um, like to have my parents read to me, but I was not an omnivorous reader until about second or third grade. And... In my school, at least, right before lunchtime, our teacher read us a picture book or started a chapter book. And this usually coincided with what we were studying in social studies. We'd already done the Native Americans, so we moved into frontier living and pioneers. And our wonderful teacher said, the book that I'm going to start reading to you now will tell you more about pioneer life than our social studies book. Oh, and yes. yes, it was a little house on the prairie. Wow. And that was such an adventure story, uh, crossing the creek and almost capsizing and losing Jack the Bulldog and building a log cabin and digging a well. It really uh, told our class what frontier was like. And so many adventurous things happened that we were on the edge of our seat and we're thrilled with this story that took place around 1870, more or less. And um, the day that Jack got lost was, was tragic because the bell <laughs> rang for us to go to lunch. No! And, yeah. oh, wait, Jack was so cool. He was like a character in the book. Yeah. So we came back after lunch and we begged our teacher to read the next chapter. <laughs> So we were pretty savvy because if we could get her to read more in the afternoon, we'd have less math to do. <laughs> and she was always happy to oblige. And we did a lot of cross-curricular um, social studies work. Now, what third grade class isn't going to love making butter and uh, cornmeal muffins wow. or cornbread? Wow. So we did that. We learned the songs that were in the book. We did a huge mural and United States map showing the Ingalls family's trek from Wisconsin to um, Kansas. So that was my baptism into the wilder world. Yeah. And when we went to the library, everybody would go to the W section of the fiction books down on the floor at the tail end of the shelving. And we grabbed other books that Laura Ingalls Wilder had written. And I just got fascinated in her family's life. And I was learning a big, significant portion of U.S. history because Mm -hmm. the Ingalls family were living out the Homestead Act of 1862, Mm -hmm. which President Lincoln had signed into law. Mm -hmm. So that was my deep, deep, beginning with this famous series of books and it was extra special to my classmates and I when our teacher said Mrs. Wilder was the Laura that I'm reading you about and the characters in these books really existed they were real people and this is a, 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 a true story written in fiction form Mm. Well, that was an extra bonus. These were not invented tales by any means. They had a deep background in the Angles family life. Mm. Bill, may I ask, where, where did you grow up? Where was this? Michigan. Michigan. And um, we had some neighbor friends in our hometown that were also Wilder fans. And one summer, they took off on a trip out west. And when they got home, they told us we had the most cool, wilder experience 
We went to Pepin, Wisconsin, because that's mm-hmm. where Wilder was born, sure. where the family emanated from. And we saw Lake Pepin, and we saw the site of the cabin. Nothing was there at that point. This is very early on before a lot of the restoration and um, historical research was done in those sites. And then they went on to Walnut Grove, Minnesota, met the newspaper editor who told them how to get to Plum Creek and see the dog oh outside. Oh, my gosh. You had to go and ask somebody. South Dakota. Yeah. And then on the way back from their trip, they stopped by at Mansfield, Missouri, at Laura and Almanzo's Rocky Ridge Farm. And that was already established as a museum. Wow. So when we heard about that from our friends in Myers, oh boy, I wanted to go to those places. And I was reading more and more um, U.S. history, frontier stories and so on. And my parents were so good about supporting my interest. Uh, when we went on vacation, we would stop and see forts or historical sites. And I was into Lincoln, too. So when I was in fourth grade, we went to Lincoln land. And finally, I got to go to Laura and Almanzo's home in Mansfield, Missouri. Preserved like a history capsule. Mm-hmm, wow. It did not need to be restored. It was just left as if they walked out. And wow. everything was authentic in the house. Yeah. It all is. The furnishings. I love going into that house for that reason. Like yeah, Bill. Man, you... Bill. Yeah. The chief artifact of the whole books was there. When you so, st- when you step into that house, you feel like they literally could be just outside. They could be down at the barn. And yeah. it's so like charming. I always think as if Almanzo had slowly driven Laura in their Chrysler car into Mansfield to go to the bank or the post office. And they didn't lock doors down into that part of the country. And we were just stopping in to see if they were around. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a very intimate um, uh, visit to a literary shrine. Mm. But the cool thing is, it is like frozen in time. Nothing was ever removed from the house. And it is like stepping in at their home. Wow. Wow, wow. So how did you become the... I want to know, how did you go from this to becoming the guy who writes about Laura Ingalls Wilder? I mean, you've written other books, but how did you go from this to then becoming really the foremost Laura book history dude? You were it. The Laura history book dude. I think that I was in the right place at the right right time. As I say, my parents enabled all of this interest that I had, just as yours did with acting Mm -hmm. and you've told me a lot of wonderful stories about your mom and dad Uh, and my parents encouraged me and uh, got me to the places I wanted to go and then my uh, research this is way before the internet you had to write a letter so our our friends in Michigan had met Aubrey Sherwood and DeSmet the editor of the DeSmet News the founder of the Laura Ingalls Wilder Memorial Society in met, and he grew up down the street from the Ingalls family, knew all of them. Wow. So they said, you need to write, write Mr. Sherwood a letter. And he started to type letters back to me, and I would ask questions. And Nancy Kobold, former editor of the South Dakota State Historical Society uh, Publication Division, who brought out Pioneer Girl, uh, Laura's long unpublished manuscript. Nancy came up with a name for that early, early group of people that were researching and memorializing Ingalls and Wilders. And she called them the first diggers for yeah. facts, information. And she included me in that. But I was a young kid, 10, 12 years old. But these people that knew the Ingalls family and the Wilders and were actively trying to uh, establish something for their local towns, because so many tourists were coming there in search of the real Ingalls. Yeah. So I would write letters. And my dad said one time, my goodness, what's this letter that Bill has from the Kingsbury County Courthouse? What's going on here? And... I had written there to ask 
you know, when the Ingalls family had died, you know, I knew enough you could, you know, death records and so on. So my dad was calmed down. He just wondered why. <laughs> he knew you weren't so going to jail. The so summons. <laughs> yeah. The big question I had, perplexing, where is Plum Creek in Minnesota? Because Wilder did not mention that very copacetic uh, name, Ron the Grove. It sounds like it belongs in Massachusetts or New Hampshire. And I don't know why she left that out of the series, but I wanted to know where is Plum Creek? So I just wrote a letter to state capital of Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota. And I, in longhand, probably on a piece of notebook paper, I said, uh, my favorite book about your state is on the banks of Plum Creek. Mm -hmm. And the Ingalls family lived along Plum Creek, but I can't find on any map of Minnesota where that might be. So I got a, they, they uh, shuffled the letter over to uh, natural resources and not a <laughs> historical arm of the government. But I got back a very technical letter and it said Plum Creek rises uh, on longitude and latitude and it flows southeasterly and Wow. All this real technical wow. description, but not the name of Walnut Grove. Mm. The but idea that Walnut Grove was out. not on the map, that nobody knew where Walnut Grove Wait, fit. And you that, can sort that, of imagine that when no. you've been it's in really Walnut Grove, really how it's you really, could uh, miss it. Mark yeah. Williams went there when he was illustrating the books, but you see, he first visited Laura and Almanzo. So Laura said, well, we live near Walnut Grove, so <gasps> be sure to go there. Wow. The creek is two miles north, and so when he made his um, expedition to the land of the little house books uh, prior to illustrating them, that's why they're so authentic, because he took this as a serious research job. Yeah. And before I forget it, uh, this past November, no, October, no, October, is this, was the 70th anniversary of the new edition of Laura Ingalls Wilder's eight books, wow. all redesigned, the type reset, with Garth Williams' magnificent, historically based illustrations. Mm -hmm. And her books had been popular for uh, two decades, but when these magnificent 1953 yeah. editions were republished, the interest and the sales of the books skyrocketed. And Barbara Walker, who wrote Little House Cookbook, she said to me recently, that was the biggest rescue yeah. of a series of books mm. in literary history. Oh, wow. Because the illustrations were just so dynamic and engrossing. And should I give the statistic that I just learned, Dean? Yeah. I, well, yeah, I was going to ask like, you about it uh, later, but yeah, I think I think it's yeah. yeah. Please share it. But that's yeah. also the thing: the fifties. That was the next incarnation. The thirties. I said there was a huge bl explosion yeah. in Absolutely. the fifties, and that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when the first television uh, overtures were made. And I'll tell you about that in a bit. But Ursula Nordstrom was the amazing groundbreaking uh, editor at Harper and Brothers, and she was Mrs. Wilder's editor, and she barely deified Laura Ingalls Wilder. She got to work with all the books as they were being uh, edited and published. They didn't need much editing. And Ursula, towards the end of World War II, had a brainstorm, and she said, you know, there's going to be a huge influx of new babies hmm. when the war ends. Hmm. They weren't called baby boomers at that oh, point, the baby but boom. they became known by that she term. Knew. And she said, I want to redo Mrs. Wilder's books so these new kids who will be reading by 1950 and on will have these fresh, beautiful editions. This was a premeditated uh, act. A, a prescient it, move, yes. Yeah. It was a huge endeavor and very expensive. Yeah, I bet. And she asked Garth Williams to illustrate them. 
because he had just finished illustrating Stuart Little by E.B. White and later did Charlotte's Web. Mm -hmm. So she got the best of the best. Yeah. And uh, when the books came out, the sales soared. Laura was 87 when she got the first box of her eight redesigned books. And uh, to celebrate this um, 70th anniversary, I did an article for South Dakota History, with the, which just came out yesterday or today, tracing Ursula Nordstrom's gigantic plan, Garth Williams' journey and his research, and how he illustrated the books, many of them illustrated while he was living cheaply in Italy, which is ironic that these Midwestern books were illustrated well, in Italy. It's just Italy. like the most and mind-blowing thing. What a trip. I looked up some stats, oh, yeah. and in 1953, 500,000 Little House books had been printed and sold, and that's roughly 20 years after Mrs. Wilder's first book. Sure. By 1959, it was approaching a million, and I think that huge bump was because people were repurchasing the series mm -hmm. and schools and libraries were buying them in bulk mm -hmm. to accommodate all these baby boomer kids. This is genius. And oh. as it went further, because I thought it would be interesting in my article to get a definitive answer about how many Little House books are now in print. So I contacted my editor at Harper, Tara Wycombe, and I said, Tara, you told me a couple years ago that to the best of your knowledge, 30 million have been sold, but I've seen fluctuating statistics coming from Harper Collins that 45 million and 60 million have sold. I'm doing this article. Can you get me a conclusive wow. number of how many Little House books are out there? Tara came back with a staggering discovery. She said, our new te technology here indicates there are 73 million books, products, adaptations, foreign translations, every conceivable version of Wilder books in North America or worldwide. Uh, and they did a lot of marketing during the 90s and early 2000s. So if it would be a, a dress book or a calendar or something connected, a spinoff, she said, mind you, these could be other products and your books and other nonfiction books and a songbook and a cookbook and things that emanated from the original series, 73 million. And Tara said, very likely, uh, the 60 million quote would be the Little House uh, series itself within that 73. Wow. Huh. wow. Yeah, pretty it's staggering it's for someone born in a log cabin and lived modestly most of her adult life until she published her first book at age 65. There she is. Yeah, I find it so interesting, these sort of waves of the re-emergence of discovering the, you know, the, the, the books again, you know, along with the series, too. You know, you talked, Allison, you were talking about how the 50s, there was a re-emergence. We were talking before about sort of the 70s, there was a re-emergence. Sure, and I, I think during COVID, there was a re-emergence, <laughs> too. And I wonder Huge. how many more sold during just, you know, the COVID year. Well, and Trip Friendly told me during that time, he experienced a great surge in countries we've hardly even heard of or localities around the world during COVID, mm -hmm. signed up to get the syndicated version shown wow. there. So yes. it was very Boom. comforting and people were at home yeah. That's right. and yeah. uh, the Little House books helped people through COVID. They've had yeah. a great influence sure in so many ways, and they still do. And I, when I see uh, families that, say, have flown from California to South Dakota, because I get reeled in almost every summer <laughs> to go to Walnut Grove or DeSmet 
And that was last summer. And it warms my heart when I see these brothers and sisters and their parents. They're just enamored when they're on the prairie or walking through one of the Ingalls homes and they're jabbering about things they remember from the books. And I just love to sort of eavesdrop and then strike up a conversation with them. So they're still very much treasured by families and uh, not used as much in the school curriculums anymore. But they're here to stay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, um, oh, while ahead, Dean is here, yeah, I oh. want to ask you something in front of him. Uh, oh. <laughs> what what is what is your sense of who Almanzo really was, and and how did people react when on the TV show his name was mispronounced as Almanzo? <gasps> oh. I'm going to let Dean tell that one. You can save that for a special tidbit. So well, you can blame Lucy Lee Flip. Well, that's oh, what I that's what I always do. We always throw I Lucy always under blame the bus. Lucy Lee. And listen, Bill, I don't know if you know my theory, but here it is, and I'm going to stick to it. For the TV show, he is all Monzo. For the book, he is all Manzo. That's Manzo. it. Multiverse. Touch multiverse. Time. Multiverse. Tomato, yes, tomato, potato, multiverse. potato. <laughs> and Allison. <laughs> The other day, or yesterday maybe, all these um, uh, blogs, or I don't know what they are, they appear on Facebook, and they're usually sensational and negative. Clicky clicky bait, clicky bait, yes. Laura Ingalls Wilder's life was miserable because of her husband, (laughs) Al Man. Yeah! Oh, yes, it was was terrible. Who wrote that? What well, story, that's bot, out there? A bot. A, it, it was clickbait. Laura goes like, it was miserable. Almanza, her life with Almanza was... Her, wow. Because when she was first well, married, they were both sick and all. things yeah, were hard. Right, they, they made, it, they made right. it sound like Almanza was bad. Yeah. Oh, yes. okay. Well... So, uh, maybe. And you no saw I jumped too. in. Did you see I jumped in and I commented on it? Cause you did. And I said, go girl. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> so, Bill, what, what is I mean, his yeah. fault? Almanzo actually was. Who, what is your sense of that? I think he was very modern because their yeah. marriage that's right, that's right. was unusual. Yeah. And everybody knows the story about Laura uh, telling the uh, Reverend Brown, now, I don't want you using the word obey in our wedding service because yeah. if I thought that obeying Almanzo wasn't a good idea, I'm not going to say that I will do that. Mm-hmm. And he, I think they were a very companionable, I always use that word, couple. They loved horses. They loved farming. They worked as a team. Mm-hmm. And in those days, usually it was very male-dominated. Mm-hmm. But Almanzo didn't dare buy a new harness or uh, a new uh, cow or a new horse without consulting Bessie. And that was his pet name for her. <laughs> she was Laura Elizabeth. Bessie. And I think they worked as a, a wonderful team. Mm-hmm. On their Rocky Ridge farm, Laura's uh, niche there was the poultry. Oh, yes. And for several years, uh, she was renowned for being a successful uh, uh, chicken farmer, essentially. <laughs> Almanza was she in invented her own the feed. Dairy she invented her own chicken cows. feed. She invented and what? And one time, they had a competition one season. Were the chickens more profitable or was the milk and the cream oh, I remember, from I remember the uh, dairy cattle more profitable? Mm. And Laura said very happily, we found that it was just about a wash. <laughs> we each made about the same. Good, uh, good for them. But they, she th- did, that's what they wanted was to find that they had a wash. That's very, that's very companionable. She was yeah. so into yeah. these chickens. She would examine like, what are they eating and which ones are making them lay more, which food substances in the yes. feed are making it. And she created her own chicken feed mixture and when she was like writing for the farm page she was telling other people how to make this chicken mm-hmm. feed and what they should put in it to have more protein and would make them lay more i mean it was a whole thing it was in those early days uh, talking about world war one era is when they really got serious about farming as a business and they subscribe to all the state extension service information they were very intelligent and very um, uh, progressive about their farming and their farm became somewhat 
of a um, lodestar for other people to check out. They had a lot of company and visit, visitations mm -hmm. because they were modern farmers and it was, of course, a beautiful place as well. And um, they were they were quite in the agricultural area of southwest Missouri, somewhat celebrity farmers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was True. enforced by Laura's writings in the Missouri Ruralist, her first uh, extensive writing. Uh, was the job she held as a contributor to the Missouri Ruralist. It was, you know, focused to farm families. And she wrote a lot of practical articles like Allison just cited. But she found another writing skill as an essayist. And she wrote very, very well thought out and well written essays about farm life, family life, right and wrong, appreciation of nature. And I call that her apprenticeship in the writing business. And Dean asked me in one of his questions, do you think Laura was very creative? And I think there were two components there. She was anxious to be successful. She had known what it was like to be a poor child and poverty and hardship. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of her goals was to inch up into comfortable middle class -dom. and her writing for publication earned her modest fees for those writings and then of course the big writer name in the family was their daughter Rose Wilder Lane and without Rose Mrs. A.J. Wilder would not have been known outside of southwest Missouri or Missouri or their hometown of Mansfield it was Rose Wilder Lane that nurtured and assisted her mother with the Little House books. We wouldn't have had those magnificent books had Rose Wilder Lane not sidelined periodically her own successful career to uh, advise her mother and uh, essentially be her mentor. So it's interesting. Uh, we think of our parents as our mentors. Uh, in the Wilder family, Rose mentored her mother. So we're going to be we're going to start. Boy, we're going to have more with William Anderson yes. on Little House Fifty for Fifty podcast presented by Visit Valley dot com. Right after this. Simi Valley, California invites you to see the place where it all began this March at the Little House on the Prairie 50th anniversary. Discover our stories, our presidents to, from presidents to pioneers. Visit iconic locations like the Reagan Library and much more. Make your own memories at visitsimivalley.com. Be there or be square, maybe. <laughs> it's like, it's like, man, it, it's like Manly is talking directly to me. It is. I love it so much. I can't yes. stand it. Um, Bill, all right, here we go. We're gonna get, we're gonna get uh, into the nitty gritty here. Are you ready? Uh, you've met everybody, so I want to know who are your favorite people in the Little House world, book and series. Dun dun dun. No pressure. Okay, I'm going to talk about the um, first diggers. I told you what that terminology meant. Yes. As a young boy, I got to get, I got to visit all of the book sites. I remember uh, my parents were in business. Every summer we went to Chicago. Uh, my parents went to the big shows in the merchandise mart to buy things for the next season for our businesses. And my mom and dad said, Bill, we'll be in Chicago. Why don't you go to DeSmet, but go on your own? We want you to learn how to um, travel by plane and you gotta learn sometime. So 
Well, the rest of my family was in Chicago. I got on North Central Airlines and landed in, in South Dakota and was met at the airport by uh, residents of DeSmet. DeSmet is the most hospitable town. Amazing. And these people just took me in. Oh. And some of my best friends still live in South Dakota and they're lifelong friends. And um, that group of people, Aubrey Sherwood, his wife, Laura, uh, his daughter and her family, uh, I just felt like I had a whole extra group of friends and quasi family in South Dakota and all these other places because the first diggers were so hospitable, so proud of their connection with the Wilder books, so ambitious to make a beautiful experience for tourists. And Dean and I can tell you at Almanzo's Boyhood Home in near Malone, New York, that farm is just exquisite. And when I saw it the first time, the house was so ramshackle, it couldn't decide which side to fall down on. <laughs> and from that almost ruin, the local people got together and the farm is just so copacetic. It's so beautiful to be there. And Mansfield, Missouri, the same thing. Uh, we've done so much work there. Mm -hmm. And we've just rebuilt El Manzo's garage. Oh, wow. So it's all ongoing. Nice. And we have a, a very nice, new, state-of-the-art um, museum, archive, and visitor center. Oh, it's Not huge. The museum is huge. Yeah, it is. It's huge. Five, lovely, lovely, old. lovely place. It's, but it's continual projects of that sort. Yeah. So I really value the people that I got to know through my connection. And then, to top it off, my first summer in college in the 70s, I didn't want to go back home. I had such a good time in, at school. <laughs> I thought, I don't really want to take summer school courses. So by then, I was pretty well known in DeSmet, and I had written a few of these little booklets already, like the story of the Ingalls family. And the tourism was um, rising, the wilder visitors. So Aubrey said, hey, we need more help this summer. Why didn't you come out for the summer and work for us? So that began my connection with DeSmet. And uh, once again, I was treated so beautifully. And uh, so I gave tours. And I got to know a lot of the old timers that remembered the Ingalls family firsthand. This is in the 70s. Wow. Um, so Bill. Uh, Laura's mother and her sister were living in DeSmet in the 20s. And her sister Grace was living in that area into the early 40s. So many people knew them and remembered them. Yeah. So this is also about the same time that Alex Haley uh, oh, wrote uh, Roots. 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 Uh, and family history and oral history was very much in vogue. So I had my little cassette tape player oh, wow. and interviewed a great deal of those um, old timers for their memories. And that was my experience in oral history. And uh, I did a lot of research, collected a lot of the original artifacts that friends and family still had in the Angus, Anguses. That was the nucleus of the collection there, which I think has 1,500 or 2,000 okay. original artifacts from the family. 2,000? Wow. And, yeah. And, uh, yes. Did I say that right, Alice? 1,500 or 2,000 artifacts? 15, that's intense. No, 1,500 that's a, that's a lot. to 2,000. To 2,000. That's, 2, 2000. Or that's, it, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, that is a lot. And it made me think, these were ordinary uh, townspeople, but their neighbors and friends thought so much of the Eagles people that they wanted a memento, and they were getting of the age where, you know, what to do with this, and I would not 
you know, ask for them, but they would say, do you think your museum would like this? And I said, well, sure. Mm. So that helped with the uh, getting in, uh, into uh, original things in the museum. And I had such a good time that summer that I went back each summer. And then when I started teaching, I thought, what am I going to do this summer? I'm broke. It's June 15th. And I spent all my first year's salary. So I just went back for uh, two or three more summers as a teacher <laughs> and worked there and, and um, supported myself. And I've been, as I say, reeled in innumerable times back to South Dakota for this celebration or that event. And uh, last summer, as I said, I was there. And um, that was the Garth Williams summer Mm -hmm. to celebrate the 70th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And the Laura Ingalls Wilder Memorial Society owns an amazing collection of Garth's art at least one image from each of the books. Wow. And so that was a focus. And I talked about Garth uh, at several sessions. And um, it's always good to see my remaining people in sure. the Smet. So that was very important for me to acquire information and firsthand accounts, which I tried to segue into the books that I... Um, wrote on the subject because it was too good to keep for myself. So it became a sharing of what these people shared with me. And there is a lot of the Dismet people and the South Dakota people in my books. Bill, nobody, nobody has touched this material the way you have. There, there's no it question. just was a natural thing to do Dean. well and but you've <laughs> but you've done it so naturally uh-huh, you've done that. it so organically and so fully so lovingly in the way you've done it i'm i'm curious because we are just about out of time but i just want to quit one quick question um because you've watched all this as you look back on it and you're look we're now we're looking back over 50 years what was the impact of the series on those places on right. the the um yeah. on the the love affair that people have had with this material what and i'm sure it's a mixed story but overall what do you think the take what is what's your take on the impact you are reading my mind because I said <laughs> we're getting close to the end I, i've got to interject the summer of 1974. Okay. Being a college student, I missed the pilot, which was in March. Right. And I saw it later. It was phenomenal. And I think it was almost the next week or two that the pilot um, made such a good impression that the series was. Oh, they bought signed. it in seven days. Yeah, they bought yes. it in seven days. Yeah. And uh, I was at a. a I, I wanted to see it, of course, but it was a very important, like, semi-formal at one of the fraternity houses. And my <laughs> girlfriend and I were going to go, so I had to decide. And I thought, well, I'll see this in rerun. And it was wonderful. Brand, Blanche Honolis mm-hmm, mm-hmm. was the script writer, I believe, and mm-hmm. she was very, very well known. Mm-hmm. So that summer, we heard a lot from our tourists about how much they liked the pilot. And then the next September or October, September 11th. the weekly series started. Yeah. And the tourism increased immeasurably wow. in the summer of 75. Yeah. Huge. And just on and on and on. Yeah. And the TV show really added a great deal of luster and uh uh, interest in those small towns of Walnut Grove and Dismet. And at first, uh, you know, giving tours, we stuck to the books and what the book said about the two historic buildings, the Surveyor's House sure. and the Ingalls Home itself. And we were a little taken aback <laughs> by what we eventually called the TV people. The TV! <laughs> we were Guilty. speaking different languages. <laughs> That's me. Hi, and I'm somebody, representing them. <laughs> yeah, we did a 
Seriously. Now, who's this Carrie? Who's this Grace you're talking about? Well, she's who's the Grace? younger sister. She's not in the series yet. And, uh, oh, their grief was profound when we had to tell them that Albert wasn't an authentic Ingalls. They loved him. And they would want to talk about Albert. And we would have to say, well... He was a, a fictitious character, but he, isn't he great? You know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And Desmet had an infrastructure of tourism, but I saw it rise greatly. So we were having Greyhound bus tours oh, wow. going up. Yeah, and they had a pad. They have a pageant there, and a bus tour would come from Sioux City, Iowa, to see the pageant, see the Angles homes and go back on Sunday night. And we had study groups from universities. Mm. And I got to work with all those people. And I always say that was my apprenticeship. Yeah. Uh, and it was so much better than working at McDonald's for me. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And um, Bill, I really did Bill, your thing. I, was I, I need to jump own. in on you here. Yeah, yeah. Because we... We need to say goodbye. We have we have blown through our time here. We need to bring you back at another point in the right? season if you will come back. We are going to be doing 50 episodes of this podcast in the 50th anniversary year. So we can come. I, we, I would love to talk to you more about we're, we we're having the friendlies come on trip and Rebecca are going to be coming Everybody's on and coming. there will yeah. be Good. others. And I'd love to have you come back and talk more about the origins and the building of this uh, along with your reactions to all of it you're you're just a you're an in well as we said in the beginning you are encyclopedic in your love of this pam i think we we need to say goodbye yeah you yeah, have man. lived it yeah so. man uh and thank you thank you again bill so much we will we'll see you in march in simi valley at the little house on the prairie 50th anniversary cast what, will you are you gonna come, are you coming bill? Will you come? Dean, Are you coming? I felt, I felt like a certifiable moron. I asked you what the date was, and then I scrolled down my computer, and it was about three lines before. <laughs> <laughs> so I now have the date. A yeah, you should check it out. I mean, LA. I think you, I think you'd have a good time. You should come. Yeah, she's she's so geeky. She and some friends of hers are coming. They're going to be there. Oh my god! Okay. So well, yeah, I'll see what I can do. All right, and good. I want to come back and tell you how Walnut Grove responded to this unless you have someone from there I no mean, no I, we want it we I want to hear your I'm take on how long that's that responded. was a biggie yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh okay. listen well, thank you thank you so this so much do, yes we'll have to do a part two and then a part three and four and five. <laughs> Okay. And this is like, not going to be a hundred for fifty. We'll oh do a hundred for episodes my. for fifty. Yes. Let's no, do you. it. Thank you very and I'll much. See you in March at Marshfield at the Cherry Blossom. Oh, yes. Oh right. Oh yes. yes. So be we'll there see you in March, too. And yes. we'll see you right. in in, in you so Missouri. Much. Absolutely, Bill. Thank Absolutely. You. Yeah. So, thank you. Pam, say goodbye for us. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Letting you know that we are out there on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. And we also have a website, too. The handle is the Little House 50 Podcast, the Little House 50 Podcast, and LittleHouse50Podcast.com. Come and check us out. We've got merch. It's really fun. It's, great. it's so good. It's also good. It's so good. <laughs> It's so good. And links to all what we're, we're doing and everyone. And if you want to contact us, go there. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for coming. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Very forever. Bye.